By virtue of the authority conferred upon me, I constitute this assembly as the congregation of the University of Cape Town. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in singing the national anthem.
Chancellor, I have the honor to invite Busisi Weng Mumalo, the Postgraduate Academic Coordinator for the SRC, to read the university dedication. At this time of celebration, we, the members of the University of Cape Town, reaffirm our mission to nurture rational and creative thought and free inquiry, to strive for excellence in teaching and research, to educate for life, and to address the challenges of society. We undertake to advance the ideals in the spirit of freedom and responsibility, and through our consultation and debate. We celebrate our founders, beneficiaries, and predecessors, and those who have built the fabric and nourished the values of UCT. To those of you who will be graduating today, we wish you courage, wisdom, and purpose. To those of you who will to those of you who leave the university and learn and work elsewhere, may you be sustained by these values and unite us here today, a fourth of truth and learning and of our university. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. We are delighted to invite opera students Sipo Gazimolteno George and Aten Kosihoi to perform for us at the sermon. Beautiful, beautiful. The vibrant South African College of Music is a jewel in the crown of the University of Cape Town and at the forefront of music making in South Africa and internationally. The procession was led by Sky Ladler and Black Roots Marimbas. The national anthem was accompanied by the, on the organ by Alexios Picatos, who graduated this morning. Ian Botma. She didn't, he didn't graduate with a degree in music, but in chemistry, crystal, crystallography to be exact. Ian Botma accompanied Sipokazi and Atenkosi in the beautiful flower duet from LACME in, in, by Delibus. Congratulations and thank you so much for blessing us with your talent. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, join me. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, Mom Grasha Michelle, parents and families of graduates, step-parents, and anyone else who helped pay UCT fees or gave a monthly stipend to our graduates. 
friends, partners, and lovers of graduates. There may also be students in the hall who are hoping to graduate soon. And perhaps people who just came to this ceremony to watch, because like many of us, you graduation junkies. Good afternoon. Molueni Dumelang, Tobe La Sanbonani, Hoyam Medach. And welcome to this graduation ceremony. Graduation is one of the most memorable events in anybody's life. It comes at the end of a long journey of hard work and balancing competing demands, trying tests and exam papers, and too many nights of staying up late to finish sometimes impossible assignments. This ceremony represents your ability to overcome the many challenges that may have come your way during the past few years whilst you were studying here at UCT. Some of you may have had to help support your family financially, emotionally, or both while studying. Some of you might have had to take up part-time jobs to support yourselves through your studies. You are all heroes, and I applaud your strength and tenacity. So I hope you feel joyous this morning or this day. It may be a quiet kind of joy, perhaps a tired kind of joy, or a shouting out loud kind of joy, whatever kind of joy it is, I hope each of you finds genuine pleasure and satisfaction in your accomplishment. Who can forget the feeling of graduating, the feeling that at last the world is yours and the suffering is over, perhaps only for a while if you're planning to study further. Whether you decide to study further or not, the confidence that comes with the achievement that a university degree represents will be there for you to draw on when you need it. The importance of this ceremony cannot be underestimated. Ladies and gentlemen, you have every right to feel elated. So don't be shy to celebrate your achievements. This is your moment. Even though there may be a hundred people wearing black in this hall today, this is not a funeral. It is a celebration, celebration of hard work, and we in Africa know how to celebrate. So feel free to celebrate this morning as we call graduation, graduates to the stage. Chancellor, the UCT Book Award is given for a book scholarly or literary merit and the best of the year. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you for the UCT Book Award for 2018, David Waddle, professor in the School of Languages and Literatures. <laughs> Chancellor, Chancellor, David Waddle's commentary on the biography of Rome's first emperor, Augustus, by the biographer and scholar Suetonius is the first scholarly commentary to be accessible to readers without any knowledge of Latin or Greek through its use of English lemata, while the new translation remains faithful to the original Latin. The work examines the complex picture that Suetonius drew showing how the biographer used official records, contemporary propaganda, and the reactions of ordinary people to evaluate Augustus, and assesses the reliability of the account that he generates. This commentary crucially examines Suetonius' work, not just as a repository of facts, but as a literary artifact, carefully constructed by its author, Chancellor, I have the honor to invite you to grant the Book Award for 2018 to Professor David Waddle. <laughs> Chancellor, the UCT Creative Works of Art Award, the UCT Creative Works Award recognizes the production of important creative work by a member of the university. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you for a 2018 UCT Creative Works Award, Hendrik Hofmeier, 
professor in the South African College of Music. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, Hendrik Hofmeyer's second symphony, The Elements, was premiered in 2017 by the Cape Philharmonic Orchestra under the direction of Konrad van Arpen. The work explores the notion postulated by the ancient Greeks that everything in the universe is constituted of four basic elements, namely air, earth, water, and fire. As in medieval metaphysics, the elements are also treated as symbols of human conditions. For Hofmeyer, the challenge was to find musical materials that correspond not only to the physical, but also to the emotional, psychological, and symbolic connotations of these elements, and to weld them into a work which could be appreciated also at the level of absolute music. The result is an essay in the creation of monumental structure from the smallest particles of the musical fabric, mirroring the concept of physical, and spiritual universes evolved from the elements. Chancellor, I have the honor to invite you to grant a 2018 UCT Creative Works Award to Hendrik Hofmeyer. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you for the 2018 Creative Works Award, Sphere Josephy, Associate Professor in the Michaeli School of Fine Arts. <laughs> Chancellor, Satellite Cities was a curated exhibition of photographs by Sphere Josephy accompanied by text panels and a catalog. The exhibition arose from a substantial research project over a number of years in which Josephy investigated parallels in the naming of twin towns in South Africa and other parts of the world. She presents large color photographs that explore what these connections mean to people in the places that adopted these names. The photographs are often displayed as depicts to draw out parallels, similarities, and differences between events taking place in the war zones and similar conditions in life circumstances, facilities, and infrastructure in the places in South Africa at the time. This body of original creative work demonstrates a distinctive contribution to the field of visual art production and engages with contemporary art and connects the construction of land place and identity with what these might mean, particularly in relation to lens-based practice in contemporary South African art. Chancellor, I have the honor to invite you to grant a 2018 UCT Creative Award, Creative Work Award, to Sphere Josephine. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you for a 2018 UCT Creative Works Award, Sarah Machet, Senior Lecturer in the Center for Theater, Dance, and Performance Studies. <laughs> Chancellor, Sarah Machet's Womb of Fire addresses how violence in South Africa over centuries continues to play itself out on women's bodies. Set against an episode from the Indian epic, the, Mahab the Mahabharata, the play interweaves personal narrative and contemporary realities with the lives of two women from the founding years of the Cape Colony to interrogate the womb of fire that birthed South Africa. The play looks at the power of the performing female body to challenge the pornography of empire in the process decolonizing and re retrieving itself. The play 
reaches back and forwards across time to reassemble the dis dismembered body, allowing it to speak. Chancellor, I have the honor to invite you to grant a 2018 UCT Creative Works Award to Sarah Machep. Graduations, as I said, are very special. They are so special that we normally invite a speaker who can inspire you, who, a speaker who embodies the values that we live by, the kind of leadership that we want to see emerging in our graduates. And today, we've invited Manda Chifularo. He's CEO of DialDirect, of course. That's important, but not so as important as the fact that he's a UCT alum. He graduated here at UCT, and we thought we should invite him back to talk to us, almost a report from the fighting front, talking to the graduates, telling them how it is out there, or inspiring you, inspiring you to, 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 to aspire to greater things. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Manda Chifularo to the stage. Madam Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, Chairperson and Members of Council, Deputy Vice Chancellors, Deans of Faculties, Academic and Administration Leadership, Distinguished Guests, Parents, Friends, and the Graduating Class of 2018, thank you for inviting me to be part of this fine graduation ceremony. So first order of the day, I would like to request our graduating class. If you can turn to, you, to my left, to your right, and also just look around. If you can locate those people that accompanied you today. And if it's possible, if you can look them in the eye. <laughs> Actually, I would like you to stand if it's possible. Just look them in the eye. I would like us to thank them for the investments, for the support, for the encouragement. So, graduates, I would like us to give them the res a resounding, ear-shattering round of applause for everything that they've done. Yes. Yes. This day would not have been possible if it wasn't for their support. So 10 years ago, December 2008, I wore that beautiful crown and graduated from this very same hall. And for me, it was such an emotional day because that, day, that journey, the journey to that day, started in a rural village in Limpopo where I was raised by a domestic mother but where I was raised by a single mother who was a domestic worker most of her life. She earned 300 rand a month to raise the three of us. And the emotion of that day reminded me that it was a journey of studying under trees, tents, incomplete structures, and later on inside proper classrooms. So when I reflected on that day, I remember thinking to myself, and I could not imagine that one day I will come back 10 years later as the head of one of the finest and innovative insurance companies in Southern Africa, Dal Direct. Yes. So the first idea I would like to put in play to the graduates is that yes, it's possible. You can make it. You can reach the heights that you imagine and beyond. You're graduating from the number one university in Africa, ranked amongst the top globally. So yes, you can do and you can achieve everything that you put your minds to. Give yourselves a round of applause.
So on that same graduation day, later on after lunch, our head of department, Professor Eric Van Stien, he gave a speech and said, congratulations on your great accomplishment. However, know that this is only the beginning. And today, as I reflect I'd, and I look back on my journey of learning and growing and developing, I look back and realize that I've got, since that day, with humility, I've managed to have eight qualifications and counting. And not, and not just to collect certificates, but it's because when Professor Eric Van Steen said those words, he knew that the path ahead for us, when we walk out into the world, we're walking in a co into a complex and a changing world, which requires all of us to commit to a lifelong learning attitude, to embrace the rookie smart, the rookie smart mentality, to be inquisitive, and in the words of Vice Chancellor Professor Pakeng, to make curiosity our discipline. And that's the second idea I would like to put in play today as you graduate. To urge you to continue learning and developing, to deepen your technical knowledge, to be a student of your context, and to continue building your leadership skills. In essence, I came back 10 years later to echo the same words, to say congratulations. But know this, this is just the beginning. And for me, when I graduated that day, I had a network of friends, most of whom I met here on campus. Not only was it the beginning of a competence journey for me, but it was the beginning of nurturing and growing my connections. And I can tell you this, I would not have been here if it weren't for the people that walked the journey with me. So I will encourage you to grow and nurture your connections. And this is hard. It was especially hard for a vendor boy like me because I needed to break out and expand my network outside the comfort zone of my vendor and Tsonga community. I don't know if you've got vendors and Tsongas in the room. Yes. Because it's very easy to resign to, what you, to the culture and the people that you know. It's very easy to isolate it's very easy to medicate yourself from the needs, from the con to, it's very easy to medicate the needs of connections away. But the hard part of being vulnerable and reaching out and building those connections requires deliberate and enormous work. A friend of mine and a golf partner, he says it this way. He says to increase your network you have to be interesting. However, to be interesting, you have to be interested. For a vendor boy like myself, I had to take up golf. Can you believe it? I had to take up cycling. I come here for Cape Town Cycle Tour. I had to take up running. I come here for the two oceans. I had to volunteer in various community initiatives. And that's where I met the people that coached, mentored, and yes, opened doors for me. So in essence, I would like to encourage you, graduating class of 2018, to not go at it alone. To reach out, to expand and deepen your network and your connections. To succeed in the world out there will not only be determined by the people you know, but by the people that know you. So, I would like to encourage you to, to let your curiosity leap over the fences of textbooks into different interests and hobbies. And that's where, in most cases, you will find that you can meet people that can coach, mentor, and open doors for you. So as I draw to my conclusion, I would like to assure you that the journey ahead is not going to be a walk on the beach. Yes, we're in Cape Town. 
If you truly and commit to unleashing your full potential, you will need to have the courage to bounce back again and again. The courage to, fa to try and fail as many times as it takes to succeed. In the 10 years since that graduation day, I have failed more times than I care to remember. I have embarrassed myself so many times. And every time I do, I forgive myself and get back in the arena. I keep coming back to this quote by Theodore Roosevelt, and I read to you. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of the deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust, sweat, and blood, who strives violently, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows the great enthusiasm? The great, who knows the great devotion? Who spends himself in a worthy course? Who at best knows in the end the triumph of high accomplishment? And who at worst, if he fails, at least he fails daring greatly. So I urge you to be courageous. Some of you may need to have the courage to pivot a little bit. As was the case for me, I had to transition from chemical engineering field into the financial services industry. And that, my friends, wasn't easy. I would like to urge you to have the courage to tell the world your dream and pursue it no matter what comes your way. And, I, and let me close with this. On the 28th of August, 1963, stands a young Baptist preacher. Yes, Martin Luther King stands as the last speaker, yet stayed up late until 4 a.m., finalizing and writing his speech for that day. His advisors wanted to get as much policy content in as possible. He stands and he dutifully went through the prepared speech. When he reached the seventh paragraph, he was seen stumbling a little bit on the text. A friend, Mahalia, shouted from the crowd. He said, tell them about the dream, Martin. Tell them about the dream. Martin Luther King was seen pushing back notes, and he began to pour out his heart. He began to say the words that so many of us have read and heard so many times. He began to say, I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. So that speech is known as the I Have a Dream speech. It's regarded as the greatest speech in the US history. But here's the thing. Martin Luther King was not going to tell the world his dream that day. Because his advisors thought it wouldn't be of consequence it wouldn't be weighty enough as most of the content that they wanted to get in. Imagine Martin Luther King didn't have the courage to tell the world his dream. Imagine if he didn't have Mahalia to shout from the crowd to say, tell them about the dream. So I came back 10 years later to say to the graduating class of 2018, Tell them about the dream. Tell them about the dream. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tamanda. Wasn't he fantastic? That's, well, for those who don't know, this is just a sample of the quality of graduates you produce at UCT. <laughs> they don't only run companies and come up with innovations and try to solve problems of the world. They inspire and they teach people how to dream. But now, just to remind you that this is Africa and UCT is Africa and African University. 
And in Africa, when we celebrate, we always have to have an imbongi. And just now, an imbongi will come and offer a praise song for the graduates. You see, our praise songs communicate who we are as a people. The rivers, the valleys, the mountains, and the animals we are associated with. What we stand for as a people, how brave we are, how wise we are, how smart we are. And if you come from my family, it's also how beautiful you are. Where's your sense of humor? <laughs> You're probably sitting there and wondering, but where do these praise poems come from? Who composes them? Well, they are composed by Imbong, praise singers, who are not only composers, but are also orators of poems and praise. One of the important roles of Imbongi, praise singers, is to offer critical commentary and narrative on the state of society through Izi Bongo. Here to offer a poem of praise and Umbongo in honor of the graduates, their families and teachers is artist and UCT music education graduate Nelly Swa Sampi Nkunelwa, also known as Sange. She's currently uh, finishing her honors in music education here at UCT. Over to you, Sange. Another UCT alumni, thank you very much, Sangye, for blessing us with your poetry. Yes, this is an African university. Thank you. By virtue of the authority conferred upon me, I admit to the degree specified and grant the diplomas and certificates specified to the candidates recorded as in absentia. I shall now grant the diplomas and certificates and admit to the degree specified the candidates to be 
presented to me. Platform Party, please stand for the posthumous award of a degree. Chancellor, Jackie Reed will accept the degree of Bachelor of Education Honours on behalf of her son, Liam Alexander Reed. Please be seated. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you for the Diploma in Music Performance, Botsilo Eric Hunt. For the Diploma in Theatre and Performance, Zizipo Buti. <laughs> For the Postgraduate Diploma in Education, Sipo Mochwene Frederick Marsha. For the Postgraduate Certificate in FET Teaching, with distinction, Helene Gabrielle Rene de Villiers. <laughs> Nabila Hendricks. With distinction, Elzet Malan. <laughs> Pakama Kwabe. Serelda Victor. <laughs> For the Postgraduate Certificate in Foundation Phase Teaching, with distinction, Anika Arendt. Jessica Iris Ashforth. <laughs> Sinovuyo Bantu. With distinction, Christy Charlton. <laughs> With distinction, Theona Cornish.
With distinction, Jessica Catherine Ehrenreich. Sinutando Pelisa James. With distinction, Shelley Ann Johnson. Mushvika Ibnatu Yunus Kamaldin. With distinction, Catherine Mary Gwyneth Lote. Sisanda Ngema. Kim Zanele Nduna. Shalom Gladness Nkuna. With distinction, Natalie Susan Souls. For the Postgraduate Certificate in Intermediate Phase Teaching, Ilham Abrahams. <laughs> Mariam Ackerman. Nazifa Ali. <laughs> Tanya Andrich. <laughs> Nuran Bandaka. Demi Carlson. <laughs> With distinction, the Suan Yu Chen. Robin Cupido. <laughs> Irshad Doji. <laughs> Romesia Faith Fernandez. Lindsay Halant. <laughs> Ta 
Tulani Geza. Sabha Khirdin. <laughs> Catherine Sarah Gray. Deborah Harisanka. <laughs> Rupa Jeevan. <laughs> Laura K. LaRue. Tembilishle Mangaliso. <laughs> Nosi Penati Mattia. With distinction, Sarah Michelle Milborough. <laughs> Nkosinati Bright Nkise. With distinction, Ingrid Pinar. <laughs> Stephanie Pille. Anika Regal. <laughs> Melissa Ann Skippers. Kazi Somana <laughs> Lindsay Young For the Postgraduate Certificate in Senior Phase and FET Teaching, Mohammed Yusuf Adams. <laughs> Chandra Kim Bezodenhout. Ethan Bingham. <laughs> Ms. 
Nokwanda Bovana. With distinction, Esther Berger. Samira Carson. Zurina Kasim. Sarah Louise Clark. With distinction, Carla Desneves. Jade Kyla Fuller. Georgina Mary Haman. <laughs> Zara Catherine Hermans. Samantha Leah Hops. <laughs> Atenkozi Cornelia Hoy. Rizka Isaacs. Ashika Khan. Genève Yvette Lasco. <laughs> Lausanne Anthea LaRue. Tato Mongezi Machona. <laughs> With distinction, Tyler Shanice Murray. Rochidswa Innocent Matuge. Tandile Mbacha.
with distinction, Kelly Louise McAvoy. Pumalelo, Simon and Tsinga. <laughs> With distinction, Sarah Ann Meek. Muammar Mohammed. <laughs> Florence Neo Moketsi Mohobo. Bavisha Asha Munasar. <laughs> With distinction, Adrian Kevin Moore. Mkredo Mtsi. <clears throat> Sayed Imtiaz Noor. Michael Ney. <laughs> Caitlin Georgina Donsi de Barros Pinheiro. Bradley Clive Prince. Amanda Putuma. With distinction, Christian Karl-Heinz Zetzer. <laughs> Nyameko Scotti. Lynn Brenda Swannefelder. <laughs> Dominic. Christopher Swartz. <laughs> Kachiso Noah Chole. Stephanie Danielle van der Merve. <laughs> 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 
with distinction, Danica Bernadette van der Sand. <laughs> Jessica van Eden. With distinction, Candace Amy Louise Franken. <laughs> Philip Pralad Vias. Victoria Grace Wellham. <laughs> For the postgraduate diploma in Library and Information Studies, Indicheni Calvin Muloywa. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Arnold Wilson Sempebwa Basajatsubi. <laughs> Adrian Botma. Luvuyu Dora. <laughs> Monique Francis Hollis. <laughs> Linné Stilting Human. Wendy Annalisa Corbe. <laughs> Nina Rachel Leon. With distinction in film and television studies and Spanish, Samantha Tamanda Mbabuana. <laughs> Selma Parker. Talisma Khan Sagura. <laughs> Keo Fei Tilly. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Fine Art, Tamari Duduzile Rufaro Kudita. <laughs> Duduza Nonkuloleko Umtunu.
for the degree of Bachelor of Music, Keegan Andre Stienkamp. For the degree of Bachelor of Social Science, Jenna Searle Abraham. Robin Joy Alexander. Lisedi Mashlako Baipone. <laughs> Ziggy Benolil. Nicole Kelsey Bento. Jacqueline Tamin Brown. McArnold Schlengenkosi Mbalenchle Dincomo. <laughs> Anastasia Chloe Dooms. Leila Foreman. <laughs> Kabiso Kimati Fuzile. Gaishin Joe Gabriel. <laughs> Jared James Gordon. Tulani Sipukazi Kualoka. <laughs> Nicole Senelisiwe Nchlengwa. Sinatemba Jaka.
Jason Johnson. Stephen Casiga. <laughs> Sino Colo Sipokazi Mabuto. The eloquence Mdinani Majali. <laughs> Malerato Mapula Refense Malete. Nicole Marcel Malian. <laughs> Lesejo Maseloane. Roxanne Maxine Matobi. <laughs> Emma Jessica Matham. Tandwa Ntombikayise Mbele. James Mburu. Muammar Molaji. <laughs> Tsungiso Regina Mutsvairo. Dumisani Wilson Kubeni. Claire Nompilo and Clovo. Shvayita and Twasa. Sarah Georgina Osborne. Kirsten Parks. <laughs> Ma
Nurunisa Peck. Liam Thomas Peterson. <laughs> Winona Jocelyn Phillips. <laughs> Kate Ann Reeves. Tabawa Skay. <laughs> and Christelle Needham Changun. Claudia Christian Thelma Turnbull. <clears throat> With distinction in German language and literature, Emily Charlotte von Lem. Buck Whaley. Byron Vaudry Williams. For the degree of Bachelor of Social Work, Claudine McCary. In Chlalo Mokoso Mushle in Kiwane. Megan Joanita Smith. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts Honors in Art Historical Studies in the first class, Kanya Naledi Mashabela. In English Studies, Abdullah Dada. In Film and Television Studies, Liam Oliver Stout. In Film Theory and Practice in the first class, Susanna May Howard. In Hebrew, Uzea Ramjam.
in Historical Studies, Humalela Nseso. In International Relations, Siabonga Thomas Kriya. Banele Mdagleni. For the degree of Bachelor of Education Honours in the first class, Mohammed Ebrahim Akas. Sharon Gale Daniels. Luanda Diasopo. Jason Donovan Matthews. Condile Sinatemba Nkobesi. Glendalean Samuels. Wanda Tina. For the degree of Bachelor of Music Honours in Performance in the First Class, Dominic Lumelo Hudala. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Social Science Honours in Anthropology, Amy Bukas. to Lassizwe Alton Clements. <laughs> Brogan Dietrich. Cosinati and Quabe in clinical social work, Peter David Dupria.
in Development Studies in the first class to Chiyana Konono. In International Relations, Siambulela Matinfosi. In Organizational Psychology, Mishka Arshad Voraji. In political communication, Lutando Ayachuma Kolwapi. In social policy and management, Uwenjijunja Veronica Black. Rudo Olga Shumba. For the degree of Master of Arts in Anthropology, Ephius Davis III. With distinction in the dissertation, Mutsawashe Helen Mutendi. <laughs> in creative writing, with distinction, Gerrit Michael Barkhazen. With distinction, Ilsa Marie Hugo. <laughs> With distinction, Peter Conrad Kemp. Anton Howard Taylor. In documentary arts, Anna Elizabeth Ferreira. In drama, Ronel Yordan. In historical studies with distinction, Lucien Erica Argent. With distinction, Nicole Yakira Isaacs. In international relations, Moses Onyango Ogutu.
in language, literature, and modernity with distinction, Hassana Musa. With distinction, Rowan Tando Murar. Ted Allen Sakimpi. In linguistics with distinction, Trelane Alexandrina Lacanya Chikari. Beauty Friday, Happy Umana. In Media Studies with Distinction, Kim Sampson. In Media Theory and Practice with Distinction, Ochega An Ataguba. In Organizational Psychology, Danielle Jamie Valentine. Camilla Elizabeth van Art. In philosophy, Chase Gibson Huff. With distinction, Gabrielle Eva Teal James. In psychological research, Sol Maria Fernandez Knight. With distinction, Tamsin Mary Naylor. With distinction, Sorrel Claire Pitcher. With distinction, Nicholas Reed. With distinction in the dissertation, Shannon Stewart.
in religious studies with distinction in the dissertation, Abdulakim Abdallah Subia. in screenwriting with distinction, Sean Francis Mongi. Kiora Petze Lenchswe Serote. With distinction, David Brett Stein. In theatre and performance with distinction, Juliet Ann Jenkin. Kivithra Naika. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Arts in Neuropsychology, with distinction, Natasha Uester. With distinction, Jessica Ellen Ringshaw. With distinction in the dissertation, Lucinda Panasha Chunga. For the degree of Master of Education in Adult Education, Kasongo Rebecca Meki. In Applied Language and Literacy Studies, Huija Li. Linda Lynette Mklabeni. In education, Helena Claudina Wilhelmina Celia. In Educational Administration, Planning and Social Policy, God's Power Chidiuto Omudiwe. In primary education, with distinction, Joanne Kelly Piers. <laughs> Joyce Letitia West.
for the degree of Master of Fine Art, Eva Tiwombolenji Chukabadwa. Okay, okay. Library Information Studies. For the degree of Master of Library and Information Studies, Beatrice de la Porte. Laimi Iambo. <laughs> Dimakatso Elizabeth Lefalatsa. For the degree of Master of Music by Dissertation, Veronica Samuelevna Lumberganguila. <laughs> With distinction, Vera Vukovic. For the degree of Master of Philosophy in African Studies with distinction in the dissertation, Brian Michael Muller. In Development Studies, Caroline Kensett. Gerald Marirai Mabuyazara. <laughs> Fadzai Muramba. Lily Clara Musaya. <laughs> With distinction in the dissertation, Samantha Sinekiwe Setole. in digital curation with distinction, Lindsay Callahan. <laughs> Tlalefo Metlaleng. With distinction, Sarah Kate Schaefer. In environmental humanities, with distinction, Benjamin Klein. With distinction, Ingrid Sinclair.
in fine art with distinction to Lile Esther Gamedze. In Library and Information Studies, Israel Mbekezele Dabenkwa. Anna Kokoe Ngula. With distinction, Janusz Mikhail Skazinski. In Justice and Transformation, Gianna Nicole Mehta. With distinction, Alexander Rex Pennington. For the degree of Master of Philosophy in Education in Higher Education Studies, Anthea Simone Pinto. For the degree of Master of Social Science in Anthropology, with distinction in the dissertation, Tamuka Chakero. With distinction. With distinction, Yvonne Zamaswazi Sibaya. Christoph Anton de Chavon Frucht. In clinical social work, Nondubiso Maud Dubase. In economic development with distinction, Samantha Philby. In global studies with distinction, Michelle Aredinzola Adebulahin. In industrial sociology, Checklin Kirsty Begby. In organizational psychology with distinction in the dissertation, Natasha Barrett. Amy Louise Brenner.
with distinction, Catherine Mary Campbell. Carla Jacobs. Alexandra Marianne McEwen Marsh. In political communication, Claudia Vajabedian. In probation and correctional practice, Claire Ann Corrin. In psychology, Tendai Elvis Mutembedza. In social anthropology, Anita Campos. In social development, with distinction, Geraldine Wanalisa Albert. <laughs> with distinction, Ludwig Chanya. With distinction, Amanda Mankoy Uamba. <laughs> With distinction, Yolanda Aida Mwanza. Hilma Nabot. In social policy and management, with distinction, Sarah Jessica Atmore. Adele Olive Bruchemann. In social work with distinction, Kozi Changela. for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in African Studies, for a thesis that mobilizes dramatic accounts to argue the need to include previously excluded natural environment in the historical record of insurgency in the Niger Delta, Henry Obi Ajumeze. In drama, 
for a thesis which investigates how performance is used to preserve, remember, and transmit memory of the 1904 to 1908 Namibian genocide across time, generations, and space. Pedzizai Maedza. in education for a thesis which enacts a post-human interactive research methodology with five-year-olds in an inner city preschool and shows that teaching and research should include the more than human, Teresa Magdalene Giorza. for a thesis which shows that a westernized humanist curriculum in foundation phase education in South Africa is counterproductive for resolving issues of climate change and species extinction, Runette Mehring. in English language and literature for a thesis which recovers and explores the intersections of the transnational feminisms apparent in the writings of the South African Olive Schreiner and African-American Pauline E. Hopkins, Heidi Barnes. in environmental and geographical studies for a thesis which shows that while cities are crucial contributors to the emergence of countries of the global south, disconnects between national and local level practices create foreign policy mismatches between the city and the state. Jerónimo Delgado Gacedo. for a thesis which examines the conditions under which urban energy systems transition to sustainable configurations and which conceptualizes socio-technical regimes as systems produced and reproduced through value contestation, Saul Alexander Rue. in gender studies, for a thesis which argues for the re-theorization of discourses on the agendas of LB, LGBTI activisms in multiple marginalized contexts, Jessica Anna Scott. in Hebrew language and literature, for a thesis focusing on the Sabbatean sect during the Ottoman period, in order to consider the socio-political challenges of marginal religious sects in Abrahamic religions, and the effects of national and religious structures on the assertion of minority identities, Halim Glensoglu. in library and information studies, for a thesis which develops a research-based framework for communicating and disseminating health research evidence, and for facilitating its youth in health policy formulation in developing countries, Patrick Mokono Mapulanga.
in linguistics for a thesis which shows that Namto has gen genres of metaphor that impact Zee Ndebele in ways moderated by age, sex, level of education, and communication networks, and that despite negative attitudes towards Namto, its impact is growing. Sambulo Ndlovu. in media studies for a thesis which shows the networked and relational qualities of space, place, and narrative, and how in South Africa, gendered and racial discourse continues to secure women to the home, Jacqueline Elizabeth Hilterman. For a thesis which analyzes visual arts students' e-portfolio styles and identifies key inequalities between different digital personas' strategies for combining capital to develop their capacities and curate their achievements, Travis Miles Noakes. in psychology for a thesis that shows that desistance from gang involvement involves both a profound transformation in identity and a drawing on socio-religious protective resources that support and maintain desistance, Jane Francis Kelly. For a thesis which investigates eyewitness memory in cases of multiple perpetrators and demonstrates that such eyewitnesses are unlikely to recognize all perpetrators and even less likely to pair perpetrators with their actions, Alicia Nokia. For a thesis which shows that the notion of citizenship marks a salient and contested intersection in the discursive construction and material enactment of power and violence in the lives of black lesbian women in South Africa, Angeline Veronica Stevens. For a thesis which investigates the effect of the steroid hormone testosterone within an, within an embodied cognition framework and which shows that testosterone improves interoceptive awareness, strengthens internal representations of the body and increases the implicit feeling of sensory motor control, Danae van der Westhuizen. In religious studies, for a thesis which puts the question of transcendence in the center of the work of poet, activist, writer, and journalist Don Matera, and interrogates the conventional themes of struggle and protest within black Africana existential literary archives, thought, and interpretation, Fuzile Templeton Tahir Setoto. For a thesis which explores the relationship between Islamization and neoliberalization through a study of Islamic finance in South Africa, and which reveals the emergence of a new Islamic financial discourse, Ra Tiedemann and Kabinde.
in sociology for a thesis which shows how and why countries in southern Africa differ in their public provision for children through social assistance programs, Isaac Chinyoka. For a thesis which shows that university students every day and academic lives in Zimbabwe are mediated by complex entanglements between politics, Pentecostal charismatic churches and university management, Simbarashe Gukurume. For a thesis which examines the coordination of enterprise skill formation in South Africa over the past century, finding that the state has played a dominant but inadequate role, forcing enterprises to create their own ways of training workers, Paul Arnold Lundell. has been an afternoon to celebrate. Let me start by thanking you, David, for reminding us all that we have a dream. We collectively have a dream of transforming our society, our country, in that rainbow nation which some of us, they are beginning to doubt. The rainbow nation is in the hearts and the minds of each one of us. We have to believe that it can be built through th transformation. It can be achieved. We simply have to embrace that dream and never, never, never doubt that it's possible for us, regardless of our places of origin, regardless of our cultural backgrounds, regardless of being a man or a woman, regardless of your social orientation, I mean sex orientation, we all belong to the human race. What make us common is that we are integral part of human race. And this, this is what historically you graduates, you are the fundamental power to make it happen. Those who have come behind us, they had the responsibility to deliver freedom to us. But that freedom is to allow us to build many other freedoms. And those freedoms include a society in which your race doesn't count. 
a society which has been actually proven that uh, education is an equalizer. We heard here of a vendor boy being born and grew, growing in the conditions he quite eloquently described. But there are no limits to what he has achieved and he still has to achieve. This morning, we had a beautiful ceremony of installing a beautiful, vibrant, energetic, and you name it, a brilliant young woman. Also, a petty girl brought up by a mother who honored with her presence the ceremony this morning. But she is described as the first black female to obtain PhD in mathematics and education. Just to give an example. And I would uh, encourage you to go on and on and to say to who is the vice chancellor of this organization, of this institution. And yes, the girl who grew in her village perhaps did not imagine that she couldn't be the vice chancellor of UCT. I know a, 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 an institution which is amongst the best institutions globally, which means in the world. Education is an equalizer, which means historically, graduates, you have the responsibility to move back to fight inequality because you are a product of equality which was provided to you by the same excellence of training and research which we're informed through about this, this afternoon. Every generation has its own mission. Make of this your mission. A society in which we have to bring down poverty. We have to prove that inequality, it is not an intrinsic part of human beings. Yes, you have to prove that as a boy and a girl can equally achieve the highest of positions in society, regardless of the gender they are. This is simply some examples of saying the rainbow nation is being built. It is being molded by our individual and collective effort day after day. We just have to be focused and we need to be determined, and we have to build the conviction that more than the diplomas we might have, ultimately, we are fighting for social justice. We are fighting for a society in which everyone can have a sense of belonging without being diminished in his or her dignity. I want to thank you, then, and the borrowing for the words of a vice chancellor this morning, go out there, do good. Go out there, do good. Go beyond your personal or small space. Reach out to others, impact in your family, in your community, in our nation, in Africa indeed. How many nationalities have simply 
I mean, came up here. I don't even want to count. But I know that this is an university which is open to all South Africans, but it's also open to Africa and to the world. We have amongst us students who were born and grew up in the so-called developed world, but they come and they drink for the knowledge and the excellence of our institution here. We are open to the world and the world is open to us. This is exactly what our own vision, the vision of UCT states. I want to thank our management, Vice Chancellor, Deputy Chancellors, and all those who are part of the leadership of UCT. You are in your hands an institution which uh, its destiny it is simply to succeed, to be better. It cannot accept anything else. You are strong. You embrace the vision of it, our institution. And please mobilize the goodwill, the commitment of every single member of our community, be the faculty, be administrators, technicians who are in different departments, and more importantly, our students. Our students who are the raison d'etre of this institution, make of any and every one of graduates of UCT a convinced, well-trained, very empowered citizen of this nation, citizen of this continent, and citizen of the world in 21st century. I want to thank our parents, guardians, those who have nurtured this class. Without your support, neither themselves nor our faculty and anyone at UCT could have made it to the level where we are we're celebrating today. So we want to thank you for your support and we believe that in any way or the other, you are now associated to UCT. So you are a bit of extension of ourselves. We'll continue to welcome not only your support, but also your suggestions of how we can make this institution even better. And I want to thank, because it's important to mention here, there are different partners who have been supporting our institution. We usually call them donors, but I want to call them partners. Because it's not about giving, or in the sense of giving money. Actually, they share with us the passion of making UCT succeed. That's why they put a bit of what they have, which is knowledge or resources, to contribute for the institution. We want to thank them, particularly those who are supporting research. Because in times where resources are not so many, research is the first to suffer. And because we have been an institution which is highly recognized by the quality and quantity of research we produce out there, we know they are those who have been helping to make it happen. We want them, even if they are not in this room, to know that we appreciate and we continue to count on the partnership. And this is December. Perhaps in a week or so, we'll be celebrating Christmas. Whoever you are, perhaps you don't believe in Christmas, but it is a time where families come together. 
even if they take the trouble of traveling all over the world just to have the pleasure of being together. We celebrate family around Christmas. I wish you, each one of you, a peaceful, joyful Christmas and 2019, which will be also of good health, of prosperity, in which you'll continue to achieve what we can call fulfillment in what you choose to do. And with this, a few words I want to say. We have opened today the 13th December 2018, a new chapter in this institution with the installment of our, new, our own vice chancellor. You feel it. There's a lot of uh, fresh air around. And there is even this pride of celebrating our cultural heritage. Yes, we are a university which is world class. It is recognized everywhere. But our roots and our identity is African. And you could feel in the ceremony we had this morning and this afternoon the celebration of our own cultural heritage as much as we are citizens of the world. I wish each and every one of you the best in health, in your realizations, and fulfillment for 2019. And I'm very humbled to be still the chancellor of this university, which now I'm planning because I'm absolutely sure it is in very good hands. Now I'm planning to step down. Thank you. Did the Chancellor just announce stepping down? <laughs> okay. We had a wonderful ceremony. Congratulations to all of you who got your degrees today. But in addition to the degree that was conferred on you today, you've also earned the right to be associated with this very special group of people in the university, the convocation of the University of Cape Town. You are now a member of the alumni. Membership of convocation is free. It gives you access to decision-making bodies in the university. You'll have representation on council. And sometimes that representation leads to representation on decision-making bodies that appoint a senior leadership of the university. So be, be an active member of convocation. Update your details. In fact, we have a, a meeting of convocation today after this graduation ceremony. If you want to join us, you'll be welcome. But as you walk out of this hall with your degree, let me remind you that your future is for you to shape. It is not fixed. In the same way the world and the country that we live in is much more malleable than you think and it's waiting for you to hammer it into shape. Now that you're equipped with the qualification that you have worked so hard for, I encourage you to go out there and make it useful. Remember that the certificate on its own does not mean much. It is what you do with it that matters. Anyone can get that certificate. What makes us different, what makes us stand out, is what, you, what we do with what we know, not just what we know. So that certificate that you have worked so hard for can be a blunt instrument if you do not use it or if you do not use it wisely. So go forth and build something worthwhile with it. This is the time for bold measures, bold decisions and bold steps. This is the country, you are the people. You are now 
a graduate of the University of Cape Town. So be bold. Go out there and make the most of the high quality education that you have acquired here at UCT. Congratulations. After this announcement, I'm going to ask you to stand and then remain standing for the chancellor to disperse the meeting and then wait for the procession to go out. And go out, spread yourself, the sun is still out, selfies are free, enjoy the rest of the evening. By virtue of the authority conferred upon me, I hereby dissolve this congregation of the University of Cape Town.